Hey guys, I'm Fat Buddy Cat, and this is a wicked little mini bike. Today, we're going to be installing a torque converter on my Coleman CT100U. Currently, we're set up with a slightly modified 196 and it's on a straight clutch it's fun but it's like 40 plus mile an hour fun quite frankly i don't need all that action for the yard what i do need is more torque for the pork i'm gonna get this engine off and we'll see what we're working with for room we might end up losing another piece of the frame the hot ticket to this installation is going to be to get the engine a little bit up and then a little bit over. That way we can clear the torque converter over the frame and then make our chain alignment. We're going to try to do this with one riser. This one comes from Grey Goat Garage and my friends at OMBWarehouse.com going to go straight up but it has slots that are also going to allow it to come over those slots line up with the factory slots so if you can picture the bolts being in there right through those slots going down into the other slots that means we'll be able to move the engine over, backwards, and forwards. I'm really going to have to get the engine mounted on the riser to see if we're going to clear this part of the frame. But since this is bare metal, I'm just going to start off by cleaning it with some lacquer thinner. And then... Primer and paint. I don't think I'm going to wait for paint to dry to figure out this next step. Just propped a chunk of wood up underneath my engine and I'm lining up the holes on the block with the factory slots on the factory engine plate. I know that it's going to come over this way, but what we're worried about is the frame clearance. So that would be our forward to back. I'll take a torque converter mount and hold it in place. We're going to want to be center on our output shaft. Sorry about that wicked glare. If I'm center, you know, right about there, you come back. We're definitely touching so if we scoot whoa baby the engine forward just a little bit oh, say right about there grab that plate again and yeah we're right about center i'm still hitting Turn this around. Yeah, we can't take that much off of this mounting plate. So, trying to cheat it here isn't going to happen. We're going to lose this piece of the frame. Get the back wheel and my hydraulic brake caliper out of the way. I removed the whole caliper, brake line, reservoir, lever and all. Stuffed a piece of cardboard in between my brake pads. Now I'm going to hang this up. That way it can't get activated. I'm going to take it outside and let Big Hurt do some work. 
I cut it off as close as I can. And then I'll get after it with the grinding wheel, flapper disc, whatever I have. Get it somewhat smooth. Where it has these big hot welds on top of this tube, I really want to be careful. Those welds could go down deep inside and there could be some sort of void action if you try to grind it back all the way. So a little bit at a time. See what I'm saying? I get kind of a rough grinding wheel on there right now. And there it is cut off close. I'm bringing it down. And now we're getting to the root of the weld that they did at the factory. So I'll spin the frame around. I'll do this side just like this one. And then I'll get something a little finer to finish it off. An old worn out flapper wheel made for a nice smooth transition. Now I'll grab some sandpapes, get after it, and primer and paint. And there's still a little bit of a rise from the welds that were there, but I'm okay with that. I'd rather have a little bit of a rise than a hole. You almost can't even tell. It's good stuff. We get the wheel and the brakes back on. Well, I got the back wheel on and I was just about to start working the brakes and something else came up. It actually came in the mail from my friend Luke down in Texas. I'm going to be adding a suspension fork this mini bike I like the risers that go with them a little bit better it's the two bolt style instead of the one that goes through it's just a little more solid in my opinion the other benefit well the suspension we're on a rigid frame I'm going for more of a miniature off-road design this time around and well a rigid fork does not give much so if you hit stumps rocks bumps whatnot uh, the chances of damaging the frame increase so we're gonna two bird this thing not only am I going to switch the fork over, I'm also going to add a gusset. That gusset is going to come into play later on and act as something else even. We'll get to that. The reason I needed this, well, we'll call it a triple clamp, is because the one that I had was already drilled out for a 5 8 neck bolt. Luke had one of these on deck. It's got the factory bolt hole, which is the same as the neck bolt that's on this Coleman. I'll get this off and I'll show you what I'm going to do for that gusset. I think I have all my determining factors in front of me to back this up. Typically, we don't like to cut these off. Okay? The only reason I was comfortable with it is because of the overall size of this frame. It's very short. We don't have a large distance between this cross member 
behind the engine plate that connects both of the main frame hoops and the axle. When the axle's there and that's connected, it kind of works like that, right? We have a third one right here with the foot peg bar. They did all right supporting that. That's not a gap, that's just a marker. It's not terrible. If I were to break that in the future, I could come back with some welds and fill that in and grab something. I'm not overly concerned about this engine plate. Same thing. If we happen to break this at any point, we crack any of these welds, I can come back and I can get me some, all right? We also have the seat tabs. One and two. Those are connecting the two hoops. In the back, it continues with the handle and this upper cross member, which is a fender mount. What we're concerned about is protecting this section of the hoops. Suspension or not, when force goes this way, it reacts that way, and this is where things can go wrong. Bigger engine, torque converter, I'm 250 pounds. Safe to say we're going in excess of the factory limitations. I cut out a cardboard triangle because it's easier to cut than metal. And it went right like that. Okay? I'm not going to use, well, I'm not going to cover that whole area. Reason being because, well, if my engine is going to sit on this riser, one of these bolts were to loosen up or something, it would behoove a guy to be able to access it with a wrench. Cut half the triangle off, and we're left with something just like that. Convert this to a somewhat thick piece of sheet metal. It's not eighth inch steel or anything, so it's light, but it's rigid. This, I'm going to be careful because I haven't cleaned it up yet, is going to fit right underneath that front mm, neck support. I'm just making these terms up, guys, but you know what I'm talking about. We're going to go flush up to the bottom, all right, and I'm going to tack weld it onto the frame on both sides. I'm going to clean this up and get after it. Yeah, all tacked up. I'm just spreading the love. I'm going to go back over these one more time. Once they're tight, I come across the top. And I cleaned off on the bottom of the engine plate. I'm either going to do two or maybe just one good one in the middle. It might not be beautiful, but this is all done with 7018 stick welded and it is very strong i also went ahead and filled some of this void on the back of the engine plate 
Beautiful. Primer and paint. Don't judge me, bro. Not yet, anyway. I'm gonna unwrap this gift. We'll take a closer look at my handiwork. It's always great to witness the miracles of a little scumbag overspray. Basically, just cover the things you don't want to get the paint on, and then just let it fly. Go over dirt, primer, paint, whatever's on there. Once you get a little bit more dirt on top of this, believe me, you're never going to know. On the back side of my frame rails, you notice there is no welds holding our sheet metal on. The concentration is where that sheet metal meets that metal plate that's below the net. All right, the metal's thicker there than it is in the tubing. I spread my welds out so that I didn't temper the frame rails in any spots. All right, that's going to spread out the tension that this plate is providing. And it's doing it between both sides at the same time. So during impact, you would have to break both at the same time. Not just one or you're riding around with a crack and you don't know about it. And then the other side goes and the whole thing goes. This is going to prevent that. It's pulling from this point and then out on those rails. All right, so that's pulling this part of the frame up there's where I went with a nice heavy weld on the back of the engine plate it's comparable all right and there we are on the front underneath just like the factory I may have gotten a little bit of paint in my neck bearings or at least on them they're a bit of a sealed job so they're not bad they just literally have a little bit of paint on them could replace them but they do have a little bit of life left in them I'm going to smack them with some WD, and then it's just top plate, neck bolt, bottom plate, washer, and a nut. If you're not trying to lube up your fresh paint job, make sure you hold a rag where you're trying to work the squirt. When you're putting these universal forks together, you just leave everything loose until you have the wheel and the axle in the situation I'm gonna get these tubes on there and they'll basically be held in place by these bolts through the top that won't be tight yet same with those leave them loose since there's more to contend with in the rear it's easier to install that wheel and then prop the front up to figure out the spacing. I think this rim has a different offset than the ones that I've used before with the suspension. Apparently it's just two washers. Last time I did this I'm pretty sure I had a couple spacers. I don't like those. Hmm. Oh well. My axle's on. It's not tight yet, but it's holding everything close to square. I'm now going to start at the top and then work my way down, tightening my bolts. One, two, three. 
Once those ones are snug, you can tighten the axle. Put the mini bike on the ground and we're going to push down and make sure that those tubes compress. If it's giving you flack and it doesn't really want to go down, chances are you're out of alignment and you have to add some shims down here on the axle in between the shock tube in the wheel just like I did with those washers six millimeter pretty sure that's what I read there anyways just tightened up my clamps so that I could get my torque wrench on these top two nuts I set those at 30 foot pounds it might be 35, but I'm just going to leave it there to be safe. Now that these are torqued, there's tension between this top plate and bottom plate. I'm going to loosen the clamps, both of them, and release that tension and then tighten them again. That way, they're in their most natural state. Now I'm going to get the risers on so that we can install the handlebars and finish running the hydraulic brake. What I'm looking for is that I have enough clearance to get a wrench underneath the handlebars and on my neck bolt in case I have to tighten it in the future. I do believe we're gonna be all right just going flat right against the plate. I have my handlebars positioned pretty close to where I want them and tightened. It's got a little bit more chop to it. We're sitting up higher in the front so we're going to gain some ground clearance. When my considerable bulk gets on it, it probably levels out a little bit. Eh. It's totally worth it. This thing's going to do a lot better off-road now. I still have a fender to go on there. But we're not going to worry about that now. Let's get these brakes done. Oh yeah. Hydraulic brake. Suspension fork. This is a whole lot more heavy duty. I have the rear axle tight, the caliper is on there, everything's lined up, ready to go. Now we just have to get the engine on there so that we can line up the torque converter and hopefully that'll be good to go too. The slots on this riser are offset to one side. If we were to put it on this way, these slots in the riser line up with the slots on the factory plate, okay? You feed a bolt through and what's going to happen? It's only going to slide to the right this way. We need it to go to the left. So, we're going to spin it around and now when we line everything up we put our bolts through we'll be going that away four bolts couple washers and I'm going to use some nylock nuts I'm not going to put anything on tight because we still have to get the engine on then the torque converter and we're going to have to be able to move it side to side to make our chain alignment. I'll use some zip ties to get this brake line out of the way once I have my throttle cable and my kill switch and 
all that stuff running down. This is pretty sweet, man. Look at this. All of that side to side action. Plus, we can go back to front. So we're going to be over that way, right? To set our alignment and then to set our tension on the chain. Yeah, buddy. That's awesome. What's not so awesome is that I have to change out all of these side cover studs. They don't work with the torque converter plates. Try to put it on there, you end up bottoming out on the studs and instead of the side cover and that's just no good. So, I'm going to have to change them out to bolts. This thing is an absolute filthy animal. Oh, I'm going to try to get it on its side somewhat and loosen these. And then just start replacing them one by one without dropping the oil or replacing the gasket. Hmm, huh. I think we'll be all right. Well, it doesn't seem to be leaking yet. Since I'm replacing these studs, I took my side cover bolts right up to 20 foot pounds that way I'm squishing the gasket the same as I did when I had those studs in there you feel me if I had only gone 17 and I had gone 20 on those studs before we may have squished that surface a little bit so it usually doesn't recover we want it to be the same if not better I think that'll be all right we get the mini bike back up on the workbench and get this thing on the riser I have my engine on the riser boy oh boy I'll tell you having these threaded inserts versus dealing with a bunch of nuts and washers it's like night and day i just ran my kill switch and throttle cable up i used the same path as the brake line we'll clean that up at the end next i will get the torque converter plate mounted and then we'll start aligning the sprockets with the chain the torque converter plate itself went on all right the sprocket wasn't having it with the shaft it got minged up on a prior installation so i had to bust out the dremel and a file just to do a little bit of cosmetic surgery. I'm gonna hit that with some paint and then send it back through. While that shaft dries, I'm actually going to remove the engine one more time and I'm gonna cut this tab off. I was kind of hoping I could leave it. They usually weld those suckers on pretty good and where we already took something off the frame here i was kind of leery of going after that too every time you grind something to the frame you're adding heat all right and when you remove welds that have roots to them you could grind something out and make a weak spot I'm going to try to do it with a micro disc and my Dremel, keep it as clean as possible. 
and then just touch it up with some paint. Just like the one I did back here. You can only really tell if you knew it was there and you knew what to look for. There's a little rise along the back and that's where that hard weld was that held that tensioner tab on. So I left the majority of it from this side. We're a-okay. I'll get the torque converter plate back on and this time I'll try for the shaft and pulley. Hopefully this is a more permanent installation. I'm taking the time to pop the seals off of my bearings and pack them with fresh grease. The only way this could get any cleaner is if you use brand new parts. This is perfect. Take a look from the rear sprocket. Take a glance up here. Okay, and there's our other sprocket behind the pulley. We'll be able to get a chain on there. I have my engine. Slid all the way back. Bring my chain down. I'll make sure that I'm taut. All right, and let's see if I pull. I might be able to do this one hand. There we go. Pull my other chain up to it. Okay, now I'm going to mark the last link. Okay, I'm going to remove that pin right there. That way our master link goes here and then we can attach it there. It'll be loose. But then we just shift the engine forward to add El Tension. Yeah, buddy. Since I'm using this RLV Gold 35, it's a little bit heavier duty. I'm not going to run a tensioner wheel. This stuff is less apt to come off of that sprocket. Picture this like a go-kart where you might go from a jack shaft or a clutch to the big sprocket on the axle, right? You don't have a tensioner there, you just run a heavier chain. Same thing, sort of. We can bring our engine forward and we'll be able to add plenty of tension. Now, I don't want to add too much because I want to keep things just a little bit loose and smooth, right? The chain could flop around a little bit. I don't want it hitting off the back plate here. I'm okay with the clearance from the chain to the pulley. But I would like to get a little more behind the sprocket so I'll take my chain off I get a shim and might as well grab a key and a nut I have everything on including that shim the key goes all the way in we're going to get all those threads, so what I'll do is get my key back in, make sure the shim and the sprocket are up tight, and I'm going to mark right along the threads.
I'll lop that off and this section will be the key that I'm using. I just used a fresh nylock nut, my wrench, and my bear paw. I just hold on to the pulley. It has a key that locks onto the shaft and I commit to turning things. No need for power tools here. It's not going anywhere. I have my alignment pretty close. I'm going around and tightening these bolts first. There's where I left that opening in the front. Remember? I was saying you might want to get in there with a wrench. Ta-da! In the back, I'll just turn things around and go at it from the other side. A little dark back there, but that's where I'll be. I didn't even have to spin it all the way around. I was able to reach right in with my short half inch wrench and tighten both of these. No problem. Same thing in the front. I love those inserts. Now that that's tight, I'll double check the alignment and the tension. I'm going to leave it off just a little bit and I'll tighten the four bolts that hold the riser onto the engine plate. All right. It's official. I am absolutely head over heels for this riser. Look at this. Even this bolt back here. Swish. Right on it. And then you just got to use your other hand and work your ratchet from the bottom. You're in the wide open down there. On the front. I was even able to get both of those bolts from the same side. It's looking like a spacer, three washers, and a shim is what it's going to take to get my driver lined up with the pulley that'll still give us plenty on the end to run a standard 30 series I always like to start stock if I can I had plenty of threads on my output shaft bolt so I used this big spacer thing and a lock washer on it seems to be all right I'll take the mini bike put it down on the ground take my starter off put a wrench on that and then I'll torque this at 20 foot pounds my driver is torqued I put my starter back on and I finished up with the throttle the kill switch and ran some zip ties on my lines going down. I made sure that everything has nice gentle swoops to it. That way we're not kinking any of the conduits. Brake line comes down to the back. Just a couple zipperoonies right there. That's it. Oh, I also connected my breather hose to my vented catch can. 
The universal suspension for it utilizes a Megamoto MM80 fender. It's not the sportiest looking thing, all said and done, but they do offer really good coverage and protection for both the engine and the rider. You see those two screws over there? I got two more of those in my hand. I start threading them in just with my fingers and then I get this big old extension with my Phillips on the end and I'll start tightening them. When they're all pretty close, I'll put the ratchet on the end and put the guarantee on it. It'll grow on you. Believe me, the benefits will far outweigh the character. Once we start filling things in, add some lights or something, maybe a number plate. Won't be that bad. This bright blue torque converter cover went on just like that. Everything on this mini bike is going to be super, super simple to maintain in the future. All the bolts are easily accessible. All the parts are easy to get. So it's kind of the reason I'm doing it this way. It might be custom, but it's custom done right. You can always add some stickers or something to that. I mean, we do have red, white, and blue, so can't really go wrong there. Let's see if I have something different for foot pegs. I've had really good luck with these 1PZ foot pegs. They might not be the highest quality thing in the world, but I'll tell you what, for what you pay, it doesn't hurt to have an extra set kicking around. I just used the stock Coleman dowels instead of drilling out and going with the bigger ones that are included with the pegs. I don't know, you tell me. I think we're doing better already. If it's ever an issue, you can drill them out and add those if you want, but I'll take it. I already did the other side too. I think my old number plate that's been kicking around on my workbench is actually going to bolt right up. It's going to be awfully close. That was impressive. Super clean. Made quick work of that. About 20 seconds. Wipe it off. Here's your result. I'll go back over it with some lacquer thinner. Just so it dries it out. And then... I'll be ready to add some new stickers. The old ones got a little minged up when I tightened the bolts. Oops. It's all in the details, baby. I'm digging that. This thing is ready to ride. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Yeah.